video. Today I'm working on this painting of a statue that I call Memories of Solitude. I hope you enjoy it. So with this one I wanted to try something new. In a previous video I mentioned that I hadn't really worked on backgrounds or landscapes or scenery almost at all in at least in watercolor. So I made it my mission for this one to put a lot of effort and emphasis on the background. Now this is something really new to me. I went about a more loose and impressionistic approach instead of more iconographic or clean. I started with those really light layers of blue, yellow, and green and slowly built up more and more defined forms. Now I learned a lot about this impressionistic approach to landscapes and nature from Steve Mitchell over at the Mind of Watercolor here on YouTube and if uh, you haven't heard of him or haven't checked out his stuff I highly recommend you go do so. He's a fantastic artist. Now I'll be honest working on the background I was nervous all the way until it was finished. Uh, I hadn't I didn't really know how it would turn out and of course you know, like with any painting, I was worried about how it would turn out. And with, like a lot of projects that I've worked on, it didn't really feel like it was going to until the very end when I took a step back and I looked at it and I kind of realized like, oh, I, I did it. <laughs> of course, I made plenty of mistakes and plenty of things that I, I wouldn't do again in the future um, that I, I didn't really like, but overall I'm happy with the way it turned out. And with, a, with like every painting I work on, I'm quite alright with there being a learning process and there being pseudo mistakes that I can count as lessons. But one big mistake that actually had nothing to do with the background or this new impressionistic approach was the cast shadow on the statue. It doesn't match the form shadow which is what I started out with and it actually doesn't match on the value study I did for the statue as well. So I think what might have happened was that out of muscle memory when I got to the end and I started to lay in that cast shadow I wasn't thinking about how it's supposed to be. I was thinking about how I had laid it in earlier. And so in the future when I'm working on my value studies, I think if I make a mistake, especially something like that, I'll go redo the value study and, and do it correctly. So onto the statue itself. This one was really fun to put together. I had actually had a drawing on the paper that I ended up not liking because of proportions and she was leaning a bit and uh, days before I started the painting process I was able to go in there and erase a good bit of it and start over. And I'm glad that I did. Instead of being content with a mediocre underdrawing, um, pressing through and putting in the extra hours, the extra work to correct my mistakes before I lay them in stone proverbially uh, I think it's a, it's a big step in my artistic maturity, can I call it that? I'm going to. Uh, but I'm still going to I'm still gonna make mistakes, I'm going to keep making mistakes, and I keep saying that in my videos, probably to a fault, but I think that's one thing I'd like to stress to younger artists, or young artists like myself is mistakes are gonna gonna happen and not only are they going to happen they're gonna happen a lot and they're also very important we don't really learn from our successes we gloat about them but we do learn from our mistakes if you're smart and so my fellow young artists I encourage you make mistakes make them more often and take a look at them learn from them study them study why they're mistakes 
So in this video, I'd like to talk a little bit about my plans as an artist. I know in my first video, I kind of painted a small vision of where I saw myself proceeding with my artistic career, but I'd like to go a little bit in depth with that of what I really feel is my, not my final destination, but the big picture of why, why I want to be an artist or why I wanted to be an artist and why I'm going to continue to work hard at it. Now obviously that entails continuing painting, obviously. <laughs> um, but as far as painting is concerned, as, as its own unique object, I, I aim to continue to explore and learn from those whom I admire and be the, ve the best version of myself, which is inevitably going to be a coalescence of those whom I admire. And so I, I feel like I kind of owe it to them to study them hard, study not only their successes, but also their mistakes. Um, and I, I, when I talk about those whom I admire, I like to put the word mistakes into a giant set of quotation marks because when you get into that professional realm to where you have your own specific style, mistakes aren't necessarily things that are wrong. Mistakes more mistakes are better categorized as attributes or stylistic options or this, that, and the other thing that I would rather omit from my own toolbox. And so, let me rec recuse myself and say, learning from those whom I admire and omitting the things that I'd rather not keep. But moving forward with my career as an artist, I'm actually here because I started as a storyteller. And I came to the very harsh conclusion that writing in just words was not my cup of tea. I don't say that out of malice towards novelists and writers because they have a skill that I, I didn't have the grit for. <laughs> and so if you're, if, you're an art, and if you're an author, a writer, a journalist, anything like that, I tip my hat to you. You're doing something that I don't have the patience for. And where I see myself evolving to is comics. Comics and graphic novels, visual story storytelling. So I still am going to do plenty of writing, but more of the kind of writing that's up my alley. The kind of outlining and planning, really, really quick, really short prose that I can pick up a pencil, write it down, and leave it where it is <laughs> when I'm done. But one of the things that I've started, and I'm not the one who has started this as a whole, but one of the things I have from the beginning included in my my thought process is the idea of these one-page comics. And while they might be similar enough to like web comics that all are on web comics or, or even newspaper comics where it all happens fairly at once one strip one one box one page but where i was starting to think is the kind of layout that you would see in a comic book but just one page almost like a snippet of a story that is self-contained. Obviously there's only so much that you can fit into one page, so usually when I'm planning out these one-page comics, it's more about the story that the reader's going to tell to themselves. The induction of a story. The, the concept of answering one question that you didn't ask but also asking many more in the process. And these one-page comics would sort of serve as training wheels, in a sense, um, to push me towards my 
goal of further building a larger narrative. Whether it end up being collecting these one-page comics um, eventually, but more so into longer stories and to hopefully, I'll say inevitably, full-length graphic novels that I can those self-contained stories that I couldn't write out fully in prose. <laughs> and a couple of things that are important to me when it comes to writing stories and building up these worlds and these characters is first and foremost a cohesion between art and story. It's not necessarily something I see lacking in today's market, but more so I see a tipping of the scales where you have these illustrated stories where the illustrations really, they take a back seat to the story itself and they serve only an ancillary point. Or you'll have art, like fine art in a gallery, where you have the art and the story behind it is the ancillary point. It's kind of the the reader injection. And like, uh, like I say often, neither of these are bad things, neither of these things are wrong, but something that I find important, and I couldn't really explain why, but something I find important is a, co a cohesion, a balance between art and narrative. And I realize some of those things means that I have to let go of certain aspects of the story knowing that that's going to belong to the reader. That it's their job, their responsibility, or even just their position to fill in the blanks so that the art can have a moment to shine. And there's going to be some moments where I have to let the art be a vessel for the story so that the story can move forward. And all these things I'm going to continue to learn about and, and test and make mistakes and continue to grow upon. And it kind of leads into my, my second point is while I'm learning and trying new things and testing out things and this, that, and the other, I want to make sure that I'm always putting myself into it. I think a lot of the great storytellers and the great artists um, are the ones that are able to maintain that. They're able to stay true to themselves throughout the writing or artistic process and still be able to deliver a captivating story or a breathtaking piece of art or a combination of both, as I hope to do. And with all that, it comes a lot of the the nitty gritties and the bureaucratic mess um, that is making a living out of art. <laughs> like every other artist on the planet, well, maybe not every other, but like a majority of artists on the planet, it's not really about the money for me, but boy, do I need money to survive. <laughs> and so it's going to be that delicate balance of doing so, creating a career off of my art without sacrificing what makes my art my art. Um, to put it in in the new age terms, without selling out. <laughs> now, what that exactly means, I don't I don't really know. I think there's a lot of things that people consider selling out that really aren't selling out. And I also think there's plenty of things that people don't really see as selling out that really I think is. So I think as long as, as long as the art that I produce and the stories I write are fulfilling to me, then I'm, I assume I'm doing something right. Which actually brings me into my last point before I wrap up the video. I am here as an artist, not necessarily by my own decision. I had always had the 
inclination towards art, um, be that creativity or doodling. I did doodle a lot in school instead of homework, classwork. I'm sorry, mom. Um, but pursuing art as a career really was spiritually led. And so I owe God a debt of gratitude. And that's not why... I mean, let me back up a bit. A large portion of my ethos needs to be God-centered. He got me here, and all my successes now, in the past, in the future, are his. They're his successes. And so I want to continue to do that, but more consciously now. More effectively, if I can. And I know that's going to mean putting myself aside while I listen to him for guidance and direction. But I think that's going to open up so many more avenues for me to enjoy the gifts that he's given me. The gifts of time to be able to work on my art. The gifts of art itself. The uh, Like I said in the last video, the new perspective I have on Earth and on nature and life. And this I can go at. I could go on for hours about it. But it's been weighing on my heart lately that I need to more often and more consciously produce art as an act of praise. And that doesn't mean that everything I draw or everything I paint has to be of one theme, but more so the act of doing so. Where my, where my heart is in the moment is what's important. I'm sure for some of you out there who may not be of the faith or religious or anything like that, it might not make much sense, but that's okay. I say it also to give a little bit of background of myself. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I had an absolute blast painting painting this. If you would like to pick up a copy, this is this month's September's art print. So if you go over to Patreon and sign up for the $25 tier before the end of the month, you can get a copy in the mail. If you would like the original, I'll have it available on my shop. The links will be in the description. Anyway, I hope you all have a wonderful day and a wonderful week. Stay safe out there, and God bless.